one of the guys who became a, a newsmaker over the weekend uh, was Mike Jones. We're going to get to him in just a second here. I do want to remind you, go to our Facebook page at facebook.com slash 910WSBA, where we have two a two-part question. Uh, and the first part is, number one, who is the government in a representative democracy? And I have in parentheses republic. That's what a representative democracy is. The representatives slash government or the people. Uh, and number two, what should happen when representatives execute policies that are detrimental to citizens? And so far, no one has commented on that, which is unusual. We have 89 people that have been reached so far. But I, I, wanna, I want you to comment on that. I'd like to hear from you this morning. Uh, and uh, just go to Facebook.com slash 910WSBA, and you can uh, get in there and answer that. But with us this morning is Mike Jones, who is the state representative from the 93rd Legislative District, and he joins us here on WSBA. Mike, good morning. How are you? Good morning, Gary. I'm doing well. I'm well, it's good to have you on the show. Good to have you on the show. You had a, a meeting, I'll get right to it, uh, on um, Saturday night. Uh, 150 different kinds of business owners showed up to it. Uh, uh, if you read in the paper at all, in the New York Daily Record Sunday News, they said a lot of people weren't wearing masks and all that kind of thing. Uh, I wanted you to kind of tell us from your particular point of view this morning the purpose of the meeting, what happened at it, and, and where we go from here. Well, it was a. Uh, it really came up on short notice. Um, it um, was a few business owners that had reached out to me with a lot of frustration, um, as we have really no end in sight here with the closure. That's, uh, I guess, beyond uh, going on the two months with uh, no light at the end of the tunnel. So the it started small, try to get a group of owners together, and the word spread very quickly. It was all pretty much word of mouth. So. Uh, yeah, we thought we had uh, we, we got a big venue and had plenty of room to spread out, and uh, but we ended up with 150 when we were expecting initially probably 40 or 50, but uh, it was a very good event overall. We were trying to gauge the pulse of the business community, as well as um, I had taken a couple of days to do some due diligence to give them some things to consider. Um, you know, ultimately the decision is theirs, so I was there to hear them, listen to them, and try to give them some things that they should consider good, bad, or indifferent if they want, if as they were looking to reopen. But it's certainly not uh, calling for anybody to do anything. It was just trying to uh, do my job and serve them. As a result of that, uh, there are a number of people who are are looking at things this week, and I know you signed a letter uh, on Friday after the governor did not move your county to yellow status. And uh, here, I guess the question is, when is it okay to defy the rules set up by the people's representatives? Uh, and that would include the governor or representatives like you or senators uh, in the state of Pennsylvania or any representatives for that matter, be it a borough council, a president, a, or a, a, a mayor or whatever. Uh, when is it okay to defy the rules set up by the people's representatives? Well, I guess that's, you know, that's a, <laughs> that's a very interesting question. We could go back to the Declaration of Independence and see what the forefathers thought. But, um, you know, it's probably well, I, actually, to- actually, I'm going to take you back to something even closer to that, uh, which is the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania Constitution, which in uh, Article 1, uh, Section 2 says, All power is inherent in the people, and all free governments have found, are founded on their authority and instituted for their peace, safety, and happiness. For the advancement of these ends, they have at all times an inalienable and indefeasible right, that's the people, to alter, reform, or abolish their government in such manner as they think proper. So I guess there's an answer there, right, right in our Commonwealth uh, Constitution. Well, that's a great, that's a, that's a very good insight you just shared. And I think, you know, um, for me, we have a moral obligation, um, obviously, that, you know, the government, um is entitled to a lot of deference. We elect the officials and so forth. The governor is certainly an elected official. We have a little bit of a challenge here because the Secretary of Health is not, yet they wield a lot of power. But uh, um, I think, you know, for me at least as a representative, um, i got to try to work in the best interest of, of our constituents. Um, you know, there's a lot of stats out of Harrisburg and so forth, but these, are, these aren't statistics. These are people. And um, mm-hmm. I, I think we ultimately have to, um do what you know just follow our uh i I've, I've done a lot of research on this i've listened to a lot of people i've seen a lot of suffering people i am at peace with what i'm doing i am i am trying to do what i know in my heart is the right thing and uh and occasionally that re- that includes uh pushing back on your own government um if it's to the point that um you, you just morally can't stand uh 
anymore for what's happening to people out there. And I, and I think we've reached that tipping point. We had sort of a social contract uh, with the government uh, back in March. Um, it's now May, and there's no end in sight. And they, they continue to move the goalposts and haven't lived up to their end of the bargain. So I think people are well within their right to start to uh, challenge some of these edicts. Well, I'm going, to gently, I'm going to gently correct you in light of what I just read a moment ago. Um, and, and the general correction is we're the government. Uh, they're, they're not the government that, you know, they're not the government. I know it's, I know it's common to say that. And I, I would find myself doing that sometimes too. We're the government. Someone asked, and I reason I, I mentioned that Mike is because someone said to me yesterday, said, well, how do you, how do you balance, um, you know, respecting the laws and yet disrespecting the government? I said, when the people make the laws, when the people are the ones who are supposed to be making laws for themselves through their elected representatives, i.e. a Republic, then I said, the people are the government. We're not disrespecting ourselves. We're respecting ourselves by saying the laws that are being made right now in our name are not respecting our property and our freedom and our safety, all of which are components to our lives. And so I, I think I think what you said and what a lot of people say, we've gotten to the point through laziness or whatever over the years where we've allowed the representatives in this country to think they are the government when in reality we're the government and maybe it takes people – taking too much power among, uh, upon themselves, uh, thinking that they uh, it's the other way around, maybe we've come to our senses or maybe we're starting to come to our senses right now. Your thoughts about that? Well, I certainly hope so because, you know, um, this, this may well be the great issue of our, of our time, uh, of our lives, maybe even for guys like you and me because uh, um, I – First of all, I couldn't agree with you more. I tell people as people have, uh, you know, I've, I've obviously taken some heat over the weekend here, and I'm sure I didn't get everything right. For example, I uh, I, uh, I certainly did not mean any uh, personal critique of the governor or anything like that. I simply mm-hmm. was saying I think we've got the momentum here uh, to get the state reopened. It was nothing directed at him personally. It was I think we've got right. the momentum and we need to follow through. But as you said, it's government of the people, for the people, by the people. And I tell folks, look, this I don't know how many times over this weekend I explain to people, you know, and they'd say, well, why didn't you do this with these folks and make them do that? I said, I work for them. They don't work for me. Right. <laughs> I right. work for the people. I am there. <laughs> They're the ones that elect me, that employ me. I serve at, you know, at, at, at uh, um, only because of them. You know, and I, I agree with you. I, I, this is a wake up call. We've had it really yeah. good for a long time and people take a lot of uh, their freedoms for granted. And I hope uh, I hope that starts to change. Well, I think you're absolutely right. Maybe this is maybe if there's any silver lining in the cloud here, it's that people have awakened and are starting to really look at their citizenship and, and what rights and liberties and freedoms mean. Mike, um, has the executive branch and the legislative branch worked well together on this? Maybe I'm asking a loaded question, but and, and, if, and if not, and if not, shouldn't they have in order to work in the best interest of the people? About 30 seconds in this segment, then we have another one after this. Yeah, well, at least our legislature stayed in session. So uh, a lot of states, they packed up and went home. So we've been voting virtually. We did some actually fairly pioneering things there. Uh, I think a lot of us, like myself, like the governor personally, uh, but they kind of went silent on us the last uh, three or four weeks. I think we made a good faith effort. Uh, It hasn't been terrible, but it could have been a lot better, that's for sure. How political has it been during that time, in your opinion? About 20 seconds. I don't see it as overtly political. I mean, I've got a okay. lot of Democrats. We're seeing more and more Democrats cracking on this. They're dumbfounded as well at some of these decisions that were made on the economic front. So um, a, a little bit, but it could be worse. WSBA Morning News with Gary Sutton on a Monday morning. It is 748. We're with Mike Jones, state representative from the 93rd Legislative District. Mike, you know, one of the things that – we were talking about this morning, and, and just being devil's advocate for a second, you know, suppose businesses started to open back up today. We understand there are some beauty salons and so forth that are going to open. We saw Round the Clock Diner open yesterday. I saw a number of Facebook posts, people uh, in some cases not wearing masks and, and, and things like that. Suppose there were another, and again, this is just a supposing, uh, another outbreak uh, in these places of COVID-19. Obviously, that would have people reassess the reopening of businesses. I see constant polls around the country saying, well, we think we're opening too soon right now. And again, I, you know, the, the polls have been fairly consistent. And yet at the same time, you know, it seems to me that one of the things in the polls you have to have is where are, are, are uh, you know, is that concern taking place? And, and the number of deaths supposedly going up again, where is that taking place? But, you know, that's got to be a concern too. When people go back here 
and and they start to operate a business again. Uh, how much of a concern is that on your part that there's a possibility of you know maybe another outbreak along the way here? And if so, uh, how do how do we approach that? It, it's a very significant concern, you know, and uh, I think there's a lot of, you know, uh, good, uh, well-intentioned people on both sides of this thing. We certainly do not want to harm anyone, but we've also got, uh, we believe we can open safely. There's a lot of best practices that can be put into place. There's a lot of guidance from CDC. If you had major outbreaks, we'd have to revisit that. Uh, but what I know is uh, the consequences of closure. I was on your show a few weeks back, and we talked about, you know, mm-hmm. closing for one month is is, is not the end of the world two months is a lot worse three and four months it's devastating so you know a policy that we all bought into for a month or so we lived with for another month it's simply not sustainable i don't see that we have much other choice do you have a sense you're a business guy by nature do you have a sense of how much shrapnel there is going to be I, i use that word carefully uh, in terms of closed businesses, you're getting a feeling about that. I think one of the things you and I talked about off air the other day was the fact that you thought maybe it was much worse than what you had anticipated with with people showing up the other night and some of the stories that you heard. Yeah, I was surprised. <clears throat> there was a study that got a little bit of uh, traction here. I commend the uh, York County Economic Alliance. They commissioned it. Uh, this was uh, going on yes. two weeks ago now where an outside firm projected that 17 to 31 percent of local of, this is York County specific of businesses that close uh, would never reopen or would fail. Right. Uh, the other night I did a show of hands. I just picked the number 20 percent, Gary. I said, how many of you think 20 percent is low, about right or high? And the uh, vast majority of people thought it was low, meaning that it would be more mm. than 20 percent that would fail. That is a huge number uh, when you think of the domino effect and how that ripples through our community. Is the, you're going to have vacant real estate. You're going to have high yeah. unemployment. I mean, this never ends. It's, or it's, it's, it's a big, big deal. Is... And again, coming back here, as you think about this, is this whole, the way we've dealt with this, is this an executive function? Is it a legislative function or is it a function of both to work together on this? Because we would, if we look at this, we would say, well, based on what we've seen, it was an executive branch function, that being the governor and his, uh, the the secretary of health and and other people in his, uh, cabinet positions there, uh, is that the way it should be because of the immediacy of the governor being able to act, or should it have been a combination of both? Your thoughts on that? I think ideally, I mean, certainly we're all co-equal branches of government and balance of power, but traditionally in a time of crisis, you defer to the executive just because it's a much more efficient way to manage. And I think right. all of us would agree with that if this was a, you know, a hurricane or whatever, that kind of disaster. Um, but I think the breadth, and the duration of it has changed that. Um, and I think, quite frankly, the handling of it on the economic side is nothing short of abysmal. I don't want to rehash all that, but we went to this essential, non-essential, which was a terrible approach. We ended up with unemployment that's double the national average because we unnecessarily closed businesses like right. construction and real estate and car sales that you and I talked about a few weeks ago. Um, and then we went into this terrible waiver system. So it was we, we showed some deference to the governor, as I think we should have, but it was so terribly managed. Then we we you know we passed that Senate Bill 613 and Don Keeper's mm-hmm. great work that we talked about last time that said just open up based on what the federal guidelines are, and they were still obstinate. So I think you defer to a, a leader, which we did, but they have to lead, and unfortunately they haven't. So we've got to come, we've got to go to bat for our constituents, which is what we were trying to do this weekend. Well, and I think the point, too, is is we don't turn power over to one branch of government for a, an insurmountable amount of time. And I think that's that the part that you mentioned right there, the length and breadth of this now says, okay, we need to involve all aspects of government. If, in fact, uh, what we're talking about here is a new normal, which a lot of people are kind of rejecting that term. Uh, final thought, what will the governor be able to do about this growing revolt against his rules during the COVID-19 emergency? We're seeing a lot of DAs and a lot of law enforcement groups that are saying, hey, we're going to carry out what the Constitution says. We are not necessarily going to carry out these rules. And you're seeing more and more of that around the state. Uh, your thoughts? Yeah. And um, I, I think, unfortunately, they, he brought it on himself. This is a consequence, again, of a, of a poorly managed plan, particularly on the economic side, of moving the goalposts and of not having any kind of message here of any real hope in sight. Keep in mind, I, I hope people understand, moving to a phase yellow is, is, is not victory. It, it has, 
it does very little to help most businesses. So we're weeks and weeks away from a green state, to use the governor's term. We would call it let's reopen safely. Um, you have to give hope and you have to have some uh, logic here. So we, you know, uh, you see that. That's what I'm, people have finally right. had enough. And they're starting to rise up across the state uh, in all different forms and fashion. And in Article 1, Section 2, the people are, uh, for the advancement of these ends, uh, they are uh, reforming, altering, or abolishing uh, some of these rules in a way that they see fit. We'll see how that all comes down. Mike, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us this morning. We'll be talking again soon. and appreciate your uh, your insights. Gary, thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. Always a pleasure. State Representative Mike Jones with us here on WSBA Morning News with Gary Sutton.